Okay, in today's video, I'm going to go over another example for the photoelectric effect. Before we get started, please don't forget, subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. And I've also made some other videos about the photoelectric effect and explanation and some other example problems. And you can link to those videos in the upper right-hand corner of this video. But this is our second example for the photoelectric effect. And in this example, we have a situation where we have a metal plate right here. And the metal plate has a work function of 2.05 electron volts. That's the energy needed to release an electron from that plate of metal. And we have the light that we're going to shine on that. That's where energy is going to come from. And the light has a wavelength of 545 nanometers. And we want to know when those electrons are released, what is their kinetic energy going to be? So we're going to try and answer these three questions. What will be the maximum kinetic energy of the electrons that are ejected from that metal plate? We want to know what will be their maximum velocity, and we want to know what will be the stopping potential for those electrons. So we're going to answer in this video those three questions. We're going to start with what will be the maximum kinetic energy of the ejected electrons. So you should remember for the photoelectric effect, we have, I kind of like to think of the light that's coming in as the kind of the maximum, the total of energy that's coming in. Some of that energy is going to be used to reach the, uh, the work function, and then the leftover energy will be given to the electrons in the form of motion or kinetic energy. So here's the equation that we have. It says that the kinetic energy of the electrons is equal to the energy of the incoming light. The energy of the incoming light is calculated as Planck's constant times the frequency of the light minus the work function. Okay, now the first thing that we need to do is we need to figure out the energy that is in the light. So we're going to basically do this conversion now. It's not actually, you, know, you can kind of think of it as a conversion, I think. We're going to convert 545 nanometers at first into meters and joules and then electron volts. So to convert this into meters, we know that one meter is 1.0 times 10 to the 9 nanometers. There's a billion nanometers in one meter. And that's going to give us four, no, excuse me, 5.45 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. So this many nanometers is this many meters. And then we're going to place this into our equation for the energy. The energy in that light is equal to Planck's constant times the speed of light in a vacuum divided by the wavelength. This is the symbol right here for wavelength, lambda. We can just Enter those values into that equation. Planck's constant is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. The speed of light in a vacuum is 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. And the wavelength, as we said, is 5.45 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. Now, you should notice when we cancel our units, this meter is going to cancel with this meter. This second is going to cancel with this second. And we're left with joules. And that means when we use this equation, we get the energy in joules. So first we had the wavelength in nanometers, and then we converted to meters, and then we converted uh, to joules, which is 3.65 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Now, in order to put this energy and this energy into this equation, because we're given the work function in electron volts, we just now found the energy of that light in joules, but of course we can't subtract joules and electron volts. We need to convert so that we have the same units. All right, and typically when we're working with the photoelectric effect, we're working in electron volts. So we're going to convert this number of joules into electron volts. And you know that one electron volt is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So this joule is going to cancel with this joule, and we're going to be left with electron volts. And that means that this light at this wavelength and this many meters and this many joules has an energy of 2.28 electron volts. Okay? So you should kind of now think about the fact that the incoming light has 2.28 electron volts of energy the work function is only, so to speak, 2.05, and that means there's going to be some energy left over. That is the energy that the electrons are going to carry away from them, and we're going to calculate that using our equation on the next page because the kinetic energy is going to be equal to, this is the energy, the kinetic energy, 
is equal to the energy of the light, which is 2.28, which we found on the previous slide, minus the given work function, which is 2.05, and we're left over with 0.23 electron volts. That means that the kinetic energy is of those electrons that come off of that plate, it's going to be 0.23 electron volts. Okay? Remember, joules and electron volts are just two different units for energy. All right, now, that's the energy in electron volts. Now, we are also asked to figure out what the maximum uh, velocity of the electrons is going to be. We know they have this much kinetic energy. We know kinetic energy is the energy of motion. So we're going to take our kinetic energy equation, that the kinetic energy is equal to 1 half mv squared. But um, let's see, when we do that, we have to uh, solve this equation for the velocity. We're going to solve this equation for the velocity. But first, we have to take the electron volt and convert it back, so to speak, into joules. Because when we put the kinetic energy into this equation, the units have to be in joules. So we're going to pick 0.23 electron volts. Once again, we know they're flipped this time, but one electron volt is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. This electron volts cancel with this electron volts, and now we're back to our joules. So this much energy in electron volts is equal to this much energy in joules, 3.68 times 10 to the minus 20 joules. And then we're going to take this equation, and we're just going to solve it for the velocity. Okay, here's our velocity. Here's, our, here's velocity squared, actually, and here's velocity. Now, in order to do that, okay, what did I do? I multiplied both sides by 2. There's my 2 over here, and that gets rid of this 1 half. I divide both sides by m, and I get the m down here, and then this is v squared, so i got to take the square root of both sides, and I end up with the velocity is equal to 2 times the kinetic energy divided by the mass. Now we can plug the values in, and we get that that is 2 times 3.68 times 10 to the minus 20, which we figured out up here, divided by the mass of an electron, which you might know or can look up. It's 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. And you get that the velocity of those electrons, the maximum velocity, is 2.82 times 10 to the fifth meters per second. Okay, so number one was what was the kinetic energy, and that was 0.23 electron volts. Basically, we just converted that into velocity, okay, and which gives us a 2.82 times 10 to the fifth meters per second. And the third thing we want to do is we want to find what is the stopping potential. How much energy will be needed to stop those electrons from reaching the other plate, from reaching the anode, all right, when they come off of the cathode. All right, now, the kinetic energy is equal to the, uh, the, the charge and the voltage through which those electrons are going to be moving. And this is V0. This is the voltage 0, the vo stopping potential. And we're going to solve that for the stopping potential. That's V0 is equal to the kinetic energy divided by E, the elementary charge of an electron, or the elementary charge, which is the charge in an electron. And once again, we're going to use the kinetic energy, which we found on the previous slide, in joules. So we're going to get that that is going to be 3.68 times 10 to the minus 20 joules divided by the charge on an electron, which is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. You see we have joules per coulomb. That's the units for volts. And that's 0 0.23 volts. You might notice that this number and this number are the same value, and that's the way it usually works out. If you have a certain amount of kinetic energy, electron volts, okay, the energy of each electron, then they're going to be the same value when you calculate a stopping potential. Okay, so there you go. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please do all of the following four things. Subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Do that right down there in the bottom right-hand corner. And then click on the bell and get notifications. Then you can give me a thumbs up for this video. You can leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends. Show them just how much you care. Thank you very much. We'll see you in the next video.